produced a very long scroll, a list of like 30 demands uh -huh. that need to be met before it's willing to walk away. Okay, so let's find out what's on the scroll. That it has to be safe, that it has to be comfortable, that no one can make fun, um, that you can't rush, that you have to listen very carefully. It really has a long, long list. Like it's one of those scrolls that spills out and then like it rolls, you know, all the way on the floor. Yeah, well, can you acknowledge to the scared part that all, that whole list on the scroll that each and every one is important and that you do honor and respect it. I'm saying we're fine, but you didn't even read all of it. We're going to read it. You're just okay. letting it know first and foremost that you care about what it says. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now go through the scroll, through all the demands, one by one, and let the scared part know what it is you want to say to it about each demand separately. So for example, okay. I'm reassuring the scared part. Can I talk to it? Okay. Okay, so scared part, I know you are on the side of Simcha's stomach and you're really tiny but you are stubborn and you don't want to leave. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. And you have a scroll of demands, about 30, that you're worried about. You're scared about a lot of stuff. And Simcha and I are going to read all the things on the list and we're going to address them with you. So. For starters, I'm telling you that you will not be made fun of, and we will take it slow, and it's going to be safe. And I'm hoping that you can trust both of us to make it a comfortable, safe experience. And now Simcha's going to read everything that's on the scroll and going to acknowledge and see how he's going to respond to you, because they're all important. So what would have happened if the tool wasn't there to help you? I would have um, been weak and, I, you know, like sharks smell blood, the kids would have eaten me up alive. Okay. So this tool really helped you to survive that year changing schools. In many years. Subsequent. Many years. In a more... Yeah hostile environment in a place that you didn't feel safe and comfortable. Yeah. So what do you think about this part that created itself and this role to keep you protected from being weak and eaten like a shark? Sorry, you got into a little conversation. What, what was the question again? You got into a conversation with the third grader? Mm hmm That's fabulous. The question was that you want to ask the third younger self if it wants to tell you more about the story and what, it, what he needs from you. And if you had a little conversation, that's probably really important. He needs to, the most important thing that he needs is a lot of time to play because that was taken away. A lot of play was taken away from that change from second grade to third grade. Mm -hmm. the, the school day was longer, the, the, 
the expectation of of how much work I was supposed to do was lo- was was more the the way in which the teachers like enjoyed doing what they're doing was different. The teachers were just much of the time, not all the time, much of the time, just bitter, grumpy men. In the old school, a lot of the teachers were women that were more nurturing and more, you know, artistic and creative. So it's like, and the day with the school day was longer, and the way that they followed a different like interpretation of the religious laws were, were was also stricter. It's like everything was away from play. You know, it was like an, a a much more abrupt like end to childhood in a certain way. So the third grader wants me to make sure that there's time to play. And how do you feel towards him now? I feel bad for the little guy. Yeah. So what would you like to say to him now that he was so articulate? He told you exactly what he needed. Well, you know, thank you for being so clear, and if the kid says he needs to play, he needs to play. You can't can't ignore that. So how can you help him to get what he needs? I don't know. I'm very busy. (laughs) Can you schedule some time? Maybe now that we're sitting here together, can you help him get some space to play? So, what have you learned from this session? Well, I think that, that, you know, my childhood came to a very abrupt end. Uh, as a result of the changes of my school and my whole family's financial and living circumstances as a result of things that obviously were beyond my control. It doesn't matter right now what they were, but the point is that really happened. And I do think that there was a certain like need to get very defended and very cooperative, you know, in order to manage some extremely difficult circumstances. And I think I've always fallen back on that, you know, and it's like being a soldier. You know, you can be a very good soldier, but then when you come back into civilian life, a lot of those skills are a little bit, they're a little bit off, they're a little bit too intense. So you grew up not being able to really express any of what was going on inside you just had to be a good soldier and now right or you could be bad because they're my family modeled being bad too people sometimes yelled or screamed or misbehaved but it was very rare that people were able to be to speak for not wanting to do something without it being a kind of you know disobedience So now, you're thinking about maybe experimenting with people in your present day life and expressing feelings about wanting to do something or not wanting to do something and you don't want to be guilted or manipulated into doing things that don't feel comfortable for you Mm -hmm. and you're going to see how you can make space for yourself to tell people how you feel. Yes, that would be uh, something to try. 